uh, Eric Steele here. Start that over. What's up, guys? Eric Steele here, head football coach, Granville High School, Granville, Michigan. Um, doing an offensive line video for the Michigan High School Football Coach Association. Hope everybody out there is doing well. Um, it's May 4th when I'm recording this. Uh, hopefully, uh, things are right. We'll be back uh, sooner than later. Definitely want to get back to coaching the kids uh, and seeing all you guys again. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of our O-line philosophy, uh, go through our offensive line manual, look at some film clips with you guys. If you guys want to get a hold of me uh, for this, you know, please send me an email. I'll make sure that that's visible at the end of this year. Uh, email, though, is esteagle at gpsbulldogs.org. And again, as I said, I'll cue that up for you. So what I'm going to go through is really a little bit uh, – what we just call our offensive line manual here. I'm going to share the screen so you guys can see that. Now, again, our offensive line manual is something that I put together. I started doing this probably back in 2012 uh, when I was at Truman High School. And more than anything, it was a way for me to kind of organize my thoughts, okay, and organize them and to make sure that I was teaching all the right things that I felt that were important for my kids to be successful. I think it's good for anybody, really, regardless of position, to consider what are the essential things that are important technique-wise or what do your kids have to understand to be successful. So many times we have all these great ideas out there, but we, you know, when we really say, what does a guard have to do to be successful on our offense or a, or a tackle? We can probably boil that down to four or five things, and we have to make sure that we're addressing those. So I encourage you guys to do this really, any position, offense, defense, um, with that. Um, do share this with our players and coaches, but I think more than anything, for me as our offensive line coach, and the head coach as well, but in a play caller, but as the offensive line coach, this is something really to focus me on what I'm going to teach. So I think with anything that you're coaching, uh, whether you're the head coach of a program, a position coach, uh, you have to have um, a centralized theme with your kids of what, you know, what, what is going to be kind of your motto, what's going to be your, your mantra, of who are you going to be? You know, for us on the offensive line, you know, I, to me, it's the most important position on our football team because for us, we call, we, we include the offensive line tight and the tight end. We're a double tight offense. The seven players. So if that group is successful, that's our biggest position group, we have a chance to be good. We can control the game, obviously, by running the football, uh, keeping our defense off the field. Um, it, it, it's such a vital spot. So when we coach our kids, we don't. We let them know they're the most important guys on the field, you know, and I think it helps them me being the head coach that happened. So you see really just right here in big letters, guys, it is a priority for us. We're going to get off the ball. Everything we're going to teach, this has to happen. We have to have our kids get off the ball and play fast. Um, if some of these things don't all line in with that, this is the priority. Have our kids get off the ball, play fast when they play fast. They're going to be successful. They're going to have confidence. So we can start a little bit with our stance. Um, you know, in our offense, we want to have weight forward. We really don't pass protect, pro pro pass protect, kick slide. Uh, you know, we, we have our own pass protections uh, that we do. Not that we don't do things like probably a lot of other high schools or colleges or, or, or pro teams do, but we don't do them a lot. So we're going to put our kids in a stance that has them they have, you know, that really fits what they are. So um, we want to have our feet in a power position. I think of a kid in their in their power clean uh, or their back squat, wherever they feel powerful, that's where we want their feet. Um, down hands in line with the same side eye. We want to make sure they have fingers on the ground, not knuckles, not a flat hand. We want fingertips into the ground. We want to be aggressive in our stance. I would rather have to back a kid off the stance than try to get him more aggressive. Um, our guards pull a lot, so they'll be more balanced. Okay, these are not, not revolutionary things, but I think, again, here, there's a practicality to everything we do, too. The stance has to allow a player to explode off the ball and execute all of his blocks of speed and power. Not every kid's going to look the same, so I don't need to try to fit every kid to look the same. The bottom line is, can the kid do this? If he can, 
we're not going to mess with it too much. Now, if a kid's struggling, some of our younger guys, we're going to tweak the stance. We're going to move it, widen the feet, narrow the feet, put your butt up, try to get your toes, you know, try to get your heels more off the ground, those kind of things. But the bottom line is if you can come off the wall and block people, we're good. For us, just some big fundamentals, okay, big coaching points. We want to run off the ball, okay? We want to get off the football. Um, when you look at our, our our film and us blocking, we're not a team that that duck walks or is overly concerned about having a huge wide base. Now, we coach that, but we think it's more important for our kids to come off the football, okay? Think about pushing a car, okay? Think if you're behind a car that's stuck or a truck that's stuck. You're not going to duck walk that car, okay? You are going to try to, you, I mean, you're, you're, you are going to try to drive your knees. You're obviously, you know, you're, you're going to, you're, you're going to have your, your head up in a strong position. Okay. And you're going to try to drive your knees through that. That's what we want to think about when we're blocking somebody. Okay. We want to run out the football. Um, some other big things, you know, we want to teach targets, specific targets when we block. Okay. Depending on the blocks, those can change. But again, that gives a kid a focus point. Okay, first step, not a huge thing for us in terms of coaching. The bottom line, does the first step get them to the second step quick? Does the first step allow them to, you know, get to their target? Okay, if I give a kid a visual key and say, this is your contact point, that first step has to be in line with that. Okay, it should be natural. It's got to be efficient. Second step, we're going to coach. Okay, we got to get that in the ground. That's where the power is coming, especially on a drive block. That's where we're going to, you know, we, we want to try to get that, that second foot down right on contact, get it down before the defender's foot so that we can get off the ball a little better than him. Uh, for us, contact point, we're going to contact with the tip of the shoulder pad. We're not a flipper wing T team. Okay, we're not, we're, we do not do this. We want to contact with the pad, uh, tip of the shoulder pad. Because what I think that does is it, it naturally helps us keep our pad level low. Okay? And then we will transfer our power from our pads to our hands. Okay? We want to win that. We want to win that leverage <clears throat> that leverage battle. And we're not going to really overcoach the hand piece of it. So we want to hit the tip of the shoulder. And then naturally those hands come in. And we want to make sure our elbows are in and our hands are inside. So we're not going to call for holding penalties. But again, I think that's a natural thing for kids. Some of your big kids, you have a 6'3", six, 6'4", six, kid who's 250, 260 pounds, he's athletic, he's going to probably be able to block with his hands really well. Now, you might have a smaller kid. He's more of a kid that's going to just try to get that surface with the shoulder and, and just get through somebody real quick, okay? Again, what we're asking our kids to do a lot of times is not hold a block for an extremely long period of time. OK, so we don't need to we're not going to you know, say that you have to get the hands in there and control this way and this way. We really want to, again, put that focus on, on getting off the ball. Another important concept with this is understanding if you're at the point of attack, if you're not at the point of attack. If you're at the point of attack, I mean, it's a little bit different. We, you know, we, we may have to control the block a little bit more. We may have to be uh, a little more um, uh aggressive with what we're doing whereas if we're away from the ball we're not at the point of attack you know we have some other objectives you know basically don't let don't let this guy cross your face and make a play don't let him penetrate but we don't got to take him off the ball as much as, as we do on, uh, at the point of attack so we're gonna lead in here okay i'm gonna start with really um the most fundamental block that we have and i think i think as a coach you have to again understand what that block is okay and what you teach. And, and I think a, a dry block fits into most offenses. Uh, you know, whether you're a, a, a gap power team, whether you are a, a, a inside zone team, um, the dry block to me is something, you you know, is going to be essential. Okay. And for us, it all our other blocks derive from that. And we're going to teach them from the dry block. Okay. Uh, so the purpose of a dry block, is to knock the man off the line of scrimmage and create vertical movement, okay? When we dry black people, we want to take them off the ball, okay? This is not, again, you, you know, we're, we're a tight T team. We're not a wing T team. We're not a team that wants to block down, down, kick out, you know, uh, create, create these like, hey, we're going to run to this hole here. We want to knock guys off the ball, and we will create vertical running lanes for our backs, okay? So that, that is, you know, what we are teaching with that. Aiming point is right to the center of the man. We use the term be thick, okay? We want to be thick because uh, what, that, what that means is we want to get a lot of our, 
our surface on the defender's surface. So naturally here, if our aiming point is the center of the man, okay, we're going to be thick, okay? We also, again, strive for getting the face mask under the chin. Our head's up. We're not, we're not butt blocking. But when we, our face mask is naturally going to get into the man as we, we come off. It's important that we have that, that strong neck. But we want that, that face mask under his chin. That's a leverage marker for us. We can look at film and see if we, if we have the lower pad level by that. And again, too, the head's the center of your body. If I'm getting the face mask under the chin right there, and I'm going right through a center, I know that I am being thick on the block. I'm accomplishing the things that I want to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to flip over here. Um, and some of these drive blocks you're going to see are probably combos. And that's okay, some of our double teams. Uh, because, one, I mean, we're, we're kind of teaching that. Okay, we're kind of teaching that with, uh, you know, with what we're doing. A lot of times it's two drive blocks together are happening. But you're going to see some of the good things. Now, I want to go back again and say, when you see some of the film, you might say, well, it looks like Mill, he's stepping inside or this and that. Again, to me, it, it's not so much about where the man is. I mean, if if I'm a tight end and I or, and I got a guy that's head up on me and I'm taking him off the ball as a drive block, if I got a guy who's inside of me in a six eye, tight inside shade, I'm trying to I'm trying to vertically move him. It's a drive block. It's not a down block. My first step might have to change a little bit. Okay. And, and we will teach that step. But again, it's it, it, you know, again, you're going to see a tight reach for us, an ice block for us, and this down block. They really are all dry blocks with a different first step. Okay. But we're not necessarily trying to uh, accomplish anything different. Okay. With that. So I'm going to go to some film here. Okay. I'm going to jump ahead, actually. All right. So again, here we'll get a, a combo here. Not bad pad level here. Again, gonna get looking for helmet under there. We're thick, our shoulders are square. Inside guy and in double team does a good job here seeing uh staying vertical. Okay. We run through, we get a, a, a good play there. I don't want that one. Another good one here. We're going to get a double team on this guy right here. But again, I think you're going to see our kids come with the ball. There we go. Our helmets are lower than our than their helmets right there. Okay. And we get now you see that movement right into the linebacker. Okay. And that's what we want right there. That movement, you know, pancake the guy. We get another good dry block clip here. Yep. Face off. Jump ahead here, guys. Sorry. This is a good one right here. A good dry block by number 80 right here. It's a counter play. There he is. Shoulder contact. I like to see that arm inside. Not, not a holding there, but I like to see that. Flat back. This guy's kind of turning, but we're getting good pad level here, good leverage. And you can see right now, helmet under his chin. Right now, driving the knees, drive the knees, drive the knees. Okay. Obviously, we took him 10 yards off the football there. All right, so it's a good job. So, again, again, the first step here. Getting it, getting getting us in position. Second step, like I'd like to see it get down a little quicker. Might be a little long, but right now you can see we got the pad level. Okay, we're under his chin. We're going to win that. We're driving. Take another. We got another. Nope, no, there's not. That's not that play. Sorry, guys. You see another good example right here, number eighty again, on a dry block. Left foot, okay. Now this guy's just sinking right now. But again, you can see we take him off the ball. We can, Actually, kind of olays him. He kind of comes back and makes the play on that right there. I'm going to give you one more uh, set of film here. Some scrimmage look here. 
Again here, you kind of tip the shoulder contact. Good finish there by 59. Again, we're not making any flippers with that. Another good one coming from our tackle. You can see right here with our tackle, number 85. Helmet under the chin, okay? It's a simple coaching point. I'm gonna say it a lot, but I say it a lot to my kids. Because that is one of the, you know, that that's one of the key things that that I'm I, I can easily assess, and it's easy for kids to understand pad level. Is my helmet under his chin? That's two things. I get pad level, and I get, and I'm getting that contact aiming point. So, you know, those kids are going to know. They're going to hear me say, "Get off the ball, get the sec seconds to uh, second foot in, helmet under the chin." Okay, no, and the one that kind of rhymes there a little bit, and you, you'll hear me. You know, the kids will know that second foot in, helmet under the chin. All right, and that's a that's a point for us there that, that we, you know, we want, we want to do. Another dry block right here. Right here again, you can see this helmet from our tackle. And again, he's going inside. So it's kind of a little bit of down block footwork here. But again, we're dry block mentality. Now we're going to drive this guy in an angle. We're not just looking to wall a guy off. We're at the point of attack right here. We want to move somebody. It's a wide trap for us. So you can see we have a double team here again too. But you look at our guys. Right here, point of attack, helmet under the chin, helmet under the chin, we're good. Obviously, when you got a guy that's an inside shade of you, this guy's probably a four eye three right here for, for our tackle. You know, he's not looking to like work his body over his helmet under his chin. He's looking to get that right there, right at like right into that V of the neck right there under his chin. Okay, and that's how he's gonna be thick. And 59 is a great job right there. Again, when we go, we pick up, pick up the double, the the, the backer on the double team. And we get a nice run. So I'm going to go back to our manual here. So with the drive block, we have a few things we go with that. Tight reach. Okay, tight reach is just something. It's, it's kind of a way that we signify to a man, all right, you know, you're you're going to drive a guy who is on an outside shade of you. Okay, it's it's a way for us to really communicate a lot. It's really synonymous with the drive block. Now, the one thing is, all right, the priority for us is vertical movement, but we will sacrifice a little bit of that. We are going to look, we are going to look, okay, to get some leverage on the man, okay? And what you'll see with a couple of our blocks is you're going to see there's some gray area between drive and tight reach, okay? And it's not that big of a deal. Um, sometimes with certain kids, a tight end, we might tell him tight reach, okay? Tight reach on a seven tech. Okay, we want you to try to get outside leverage versus just, just drive him, take him off the ball. Now, at the end of the day, more times than not, we're going to revert to the drive block. Now, when we got some, you know, maybe a special tight end that's got great feet, big kid, we may go to this and say, really try to take him off the ball with leverage too. Okay. And if you do notice this here, like, you know, if we, if we, if we're telling a kid, hey, we want to, we want a tight reach here. Okay. If the defender jumps outside, we're going to drive through him and take him off. We're just going to, we're basically going to take him on his track off the ball. So if that guy jumps, if I'm going to sit, you know, that seven tech fights hard outside, I'm just going to now drive him to the sideline with that. Ice block for us, also in the dry block family. You know, we call it ice because essentially it's the block we use in an ISO. Now we're going to aim through the inside number. Okay. Now I was thinking on that second foot, uh, that second foot in the ground. Um, you know, we want to step with the inside foot on an ice block, you know, so if I'm, if I'm the right tight end and I'm going to block out on a seven tack, I'm going to step with my left foot, right foot. So I get that contact. Okay. Now, one of the things you'll see in a lot of the blocks here too, is we want to drive the backside knee through, drive that through. Okay. That's where we're getting our power. Okay. We will coach base up with a kid if we need to, but it's not a starting point for us. We're not going to start by telling a kid to block a guy and keep a wide base. Now, if a kid is falling off blocks, we notice that, that's the natural thing we do. We're gonna, we will widen his base out to try to keep him a little more solid if he falls off blocks. And vice versa, if a kid doesn't come off the ball really well, a lot of times they have these big wide stances, we tighten them up a little bit because we think it helps them drive off the ball a little bit better. Now, different one here for us, wide reach. Okay. Now this is this is we're going to run this in our outside zone. Okay, um, or a lot of times the backside of a play uh, when we're not pulling a guy. 
uh, so the wide, the wide reach, not a wide teach, the typo in there. I think that's from the last one. I had that in. A wide reach is we want to gain outside leverage. So now the aiming point is the outside armpit. Okay, we want to drive that. We still want to try to drive that back knee. All right, through the outside leg. Now we want to be square if we can. Okay, we don't want to try to you know try to hook our butt out and like position block them. We, we want to roughly get to that dry block position, but we're going to be a little bit looser on it, okay? Obviously, now, our first step has to be different if we're going to wider reach somebody, okay? And again, I'm not going to sit and coach. Is it a six-inch step this way? Is it that way? The, the way we start with this, to not confuse our kids, is we say you need to get, okay, you need to get to the outside armpit, okay? And we actually teach it. We want outside armpit with our inside shoulder. That's what we want. So you got to get there. If you can get there and be effective, I don't need to teach your first step, okay? Now, if you can't, we're going to play with that first step, okay? We'll work on it. Some kids, we're going to say, well, it's kind of like you're pulling a little bit. All right, you, 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 can, you can lose a little bit of ground on it. You can just open up and put it down. There's multiple ways to do that. but what I'm going to tell you is, again, we're not going to overcoach that first step, okay? We're telling them what we, where we want them to get to and what we're trying to accomplish, okay? And by that means, all right, now, now hopefully they can get that. So we'll look at some wider reach blocks right now. Okay, let me jump ahead here. Different playlist here. Go to our stretch play. Few clips. Okay. So wide reach. We we will pull on our outside zone a little bit. There it is, right there. You kind of see. All right, these guys all all kind of in conjunction right here. Now, one thing we will tell our tight ends a lot of time on a wide reach is we want them to be thicker. We want because we don't we don't want to. Uh, we, we don't want this guy to jump hard inside, and even though our tackle should be seen, and we don't want him to jump inside and penetrate. So we take this guy off the ball. We want to get leverage. There it is. Like to see this guy be better here. Doesn't hurt us here. Maybe he thought he had help from the tackle. Again, he's looking to go to 50. That's a long way out there, but he's got to be a little, he's got to try to try to be a little better there. Another wide reach here. You're going to see on this one here, great job by 14 and 56. So off the ball, again, I wouldn't coach 14 step like, like this, but he doesn't. He was a heck of a tight end. All right, so he's fighting fighting right here. And again, we were telling our tight ends, we don't want you to overreach. So this guy is now three is going to fight to the sideline. Just turn him out. Take him to the sideline. Take him to the sideline. Take him to the sideline. Creates a running lane for us in the wide reach play or on the stretch play. 56, really good job right here. Steps, nothing coming in at that first level for him, goes up, picks up the linebacker. Okay, good job. Go back and look at 55 right here. 55 is going to look to get out in 74. Step, shoulder to outside armpit. We're in good shape right there. All right. So good play for us. And I think the big coaching point on this one for me is 14 does a good job of not overreaching. Right now, now again, he's he's doing a good job maintaining contact here. Again, we don't coach hands, but he's doing a good job with his hands right now. They're inside there. He's doing a good job with his hands. You know, wide reach right here. Tackle tight end, kind of kind of work on this. We got a six eye right here, a six tech that's gonna come in hard. Kind of combo to it a little bit, but right there, we get a we we secure here, we secure here. Tight end can have a little bit of footwork. We actually had him comboing up to the to the safety right here on this play. But again, tackle does a good job right now. Okay, he gets help from the tight end, but we got we got the edge secured right here.
in tight end. We want them to be a little thicker, but we get outside leverage. Okay, we're able to get out there, get the play. Look at one more clip right here. Kind of again, you kind of see right here. Again, we have a six technique. We're going to kind of work a combo on them. There's the footwork. Tackle, overtakes. Like to have him get a little bit more out here. But again, serves purpose on the plate. I'd like to see the tackle do a better job with that. Go back to our document here. Now, we talk about a down block. Um, so again, down block for us is a drive block to the man who's inside of us, like a, a, a far man inside of us. Not like a guy who's shading me, but I'm a tackle, and I got to go down and block a two technique that's head up on my guard. Okay. Now, the one thing with a down block we're going to tell our guys, though, is this. Now, we want to try to drive him off the ball on that angle. Okay. We're not going to try to work and take him, like, you know, loop inside and do this. We're going to drive the man on the angle he's there. But we already have leverage on him. We have to remember that. We have leverage on him. So we don't want to give up that leverage and we can't let him penetrate. So for us, our aiming point is through that V of the neck. Okay. That V of the neck. Now, I've said this on a few of the other ones that are listed. And this is the first time I'll mention it. I think it is critical in the down block when I got to go inside that I get my toe, my knee, and my hip, they're in line. Okay. That I'm not kind of just swinging open and being lazy on that. So I'm almost really, I'm kind of pivoting on my outside leg and turning it and stepping and driving down. Okay. With that. So again, with, with, with the, in the spirit of trying not to overcoach, we tell the kids again, this is what we want you to do. We want you to try to drive him. Okay. We want you to try to drive him on the angle he's at, but understand that you have, you have leverage and he can't penetrate. So now that kind of solves the problem for us in terms of, you know, if the guy is going to really penetrate, we'll, we'll put our head across them and we will work that technique. We don't call it a gap block like some people do. Okay. So for us, a down block is we're aiming for that V of the neck. So if you're outside of me right here, you're looking to get that, that, that helmet right here under my chin, right here. And you're going to drive me on this angle. That's what you're going to do with it. Okay. And again, if I'm a penetrator, then I got to be, I'm, if I'm a penetrating defensive lineman, I have to be flatter with my first step and get my head across. This goes back to the spirit again. If, what are we trying to accomplish with this? Okay. They have to know that. That That's more important than trying to say your first step's this. Is it a gap block? Is it a drive block? Is it a tight reach or is it a drive? Understand what we're trying to accomplish. Okay. And, and, and not only with the block, but with the play. Okay. And again, a lot of these, this verbiage, is for is for me to when we teach these in our individual sessions that I know I know and I know all my coaches are on the same page of what is important in the base techniques of this. But then we are going to again we will we will transform these base techniques into our schemes. Okay, we're gonna you know tell tell our guys uh, you know you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna have a dry block on this play. Okay, it's a wide reach here or 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 whatnot. Um. So, you know, we, we want to have that. And, and even for sideline adjustments, you know, we, we can we can talk about things and just say, hey, we're going to do this. But instead of instead of doing this, you're going to drive them. OK, uh, just just common terminology explaining our blocks. We talk about. Cutting. OK, uh, we, we will cut guys, especially on the backside. Be flat. OK. We want to we want to get to the back shoulder to the to the front, front five board. We want to get our head across legal block. And we, obviously, we want to get the man on the ground. One, it's it's for a you know on the back side when we pull, it's a way for us to get a guy that we probably couldn't reach. Okay. Now another thing is is I think it's a way again just to slow down an overly aggressive defender or a guy that's really good. Make him think. So we do teach the cut block. Um, we practice it on agile bags and, you know, we, we're going to teach it cleanly with that. So it's one thing we do now a forklift block for us. Okay. We get a lot of people that try to dive at us or some people call them grubs. A forklift for us is a way for us to work on actually basically lifting 
and getting underneath those guys that are trying to just create piles at the line of scrimmage. So not something we do a ton, but we are going to work on that in the preseason. And then we're going to work on that probably once a week or like for a quick period um, with our guys, just so we're ready for that. And we label our poles. Okay, we have that here, you know, trap poles, alley pole, bubble poles. So we have three of them. Um, nice thing for that is, again, we when we teach some of our pass protections that pulls, this fits right in with it. Um, you know, you know, all, all these all these things are outlined so that, again, we're on a common ground with that as coaches. As you know, I, I know that my freshman coaches and JV coaches are using the same verbiage and language. I know that my middle school coaches have these things. Um, and, you know, just for me to. I go through this every year, okay? That says 18, okay? Um, I have my 19 one I don't have up here, uh, but uh, I go through this every year and just make small tweaks to it, okay? Because it's it's something that, as I assess, and I, I do it in the off season, usually probably like January, February, okay? When I, one of the first things I get going again is when I look at the position I coach, which is the offensive line, what, you know, what, what, what did we do well? What didn't we do? And then what tweaks do I need to do to our, our base stuff? And again, I have a lot of these old ones saved because I do also think there's sometimes a value in going back and saying, all right, have I gotten, you know, have I gotten too far away from some of the things I taught in 2012 when we were still a pretty good offense? Um, do I need to go back and look at that? Is, is it simpler? So I keep those documents there with that. And, I, you know, that second level, you know, combos, we, we have all, all this stuff how we label a defense, okay? Again, all this stuff is so that we have common communication, okay, with that. So, you know, I'll leave you guys with this. Um, actually, I'll leave you, put my email up here so you guys can see that, okay? East Eagle at gpsbulldogs.org. If you want anything from me, um, there's that. But I'll leave with this. You know, I think if you're a head coach, I think it's a good idea for you to encourage your position coaches to come up with uh, their own uh, little handbooks, per se, or manuals. I know our running backs coach has one. Uh, our, back, you know, our backfield coach does at Granville. Our defensive guys all have kind of fundamental things. Some And, and, and some of them have done it with videos. Some of them have done it with, um, you know, Google, you know, uh, just like drives that they share with kids and coaches. I think it is important that they become not just experts in what they teach, but they know what they're teaching and that they can focus on what's important. In this kind of world that we're in right now, uh, with where we really don't know when we're going to come back, hopefully we're going to come back uh, and play in the fall. You know, I've stressed to my coaches that we really, when we hit the ground, we, you know, we need to really focus on what is important and you need to know what's important, not just, I, this is a great drill. What do your kids need to do to be successful? Focus on those things. That might be more, more important than ever this year uh, for us. I think if you're not a head coach and you're a coordinator position coach, you know, I, I just think it's a good idea for you guys to come up with the things that uh, you think are essential to your position or what you do and do that. I would say for, you know, I, I have a, a program manual for us um, where I kind of outline just the, the, the big things that I, are, I think are important for us as a program. Again, a lot of that is making sure for me, it, it's it's for me as the head coach to say, am I getting this stuff back? And I can go back and look at that, okay? And make sure that, you know, something that, that I said uh, in January that I said was really important, am I addressing it now or is it not important anymore? It's a way for you to kind of as assess yourself with that. And that's something that I distribute to all my coaches. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, hope to be back on the football field and, and in the classroom soon. So have a good night, guys. If you have any questions, email me. Bye.